Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm standing on a bridge over the River Ness in the Scottish city of Inverness. Over there is the castle, the cathedral, and that building there is the Highland Hospice. The reason I mention the Highland Hospice is today is an episode of Miniature Railway Britain, and the Miniature Railway we're going to, the Ness Islands Miniature Railway, is owned by the Highland Hospice, so all money they make goes to a good cause, the Highland Hospice. So that's looking up towards Loch Ness. We're going to follow the River Ness. The railway's kind of on that side, but it's actually on an island, but the island's closer to that side, but in true Henry's Adventures fashion. I'm going this way. I'm going to walk up the Ness for a while now, and I'll show you the islands, the River Ness Islands. It's a park in the middle of the river, and we'll walk through there to the Miniature Railway. Well, I've now come a little bit further upstream, up the River Ness. It's a bit quieter back there. They were doing road work, so I thought I'll um, walk up a bit further before I say any more. There's a few things I want to point out from here. As for the island, see where those trees are there? That is one of the islands. It's not the one that holds the miniature railway now. I'm not entirely sure at this stage. There's a, what appears to be a river here. I'm not sure if this is one of the islands or if this is just uh, another river joining the River Ness. As for Miniature Railway Britain, I, um, you know, the plan is to visit every Miniature Railway in the British Isles now. Been to about 50 odd so far since launching this series. So far they have all been in England, but of course the British Isles include Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and I'm including Republic of Ireland and Channel Islands, Isle of Man. This is the first one I've done outside of England in this series. So, first Scottish one I've done. Interestingly, it's also the most northerly miniature railway in Britain that is open to the public. The reason I say that is because I believe there is one on Orkney, but it's, um, it used to be open to the public, but it's now private. So, we've got a few bit of a bridges adventure now. Here's the first of them. So we're going to cross this bridge and head out onto the Ness Islands. So here I am, I'm down on the shores of the River Ness. You can just see the bridge. We started on the suspension bridge and the cathedral. To pan around here, there's a man fishing. And there's this funny thing here. This looks a bit like an unfinished bridge. It's actually like a sculpture um, stroke piece of art. Not everyone likes it. Some people say it's vandalism, others say it's really nice. It takes you above the river. In front of us is the Ness Island, so it's not the one the Miniature Railway is on. The Miniature Railway is more over that way. You can just see one of the bridges. Now there's a river coming in here. Now at the last, when I came onto that bridge, I still haven't quite worked out if that river is one of the islands or not. It might be, you know, a um, just like a, a stream flowing around the back. But what I have discovered, something here's quite interesting. That is that river down there in the bushes. But have a look at this. Where this bridge here is, if you look down there to the River Ness, you can see there's, there's another river flowing into the Ness. If we have a look here, this river actually goes over that river. So technically it's an aqueduct, but it's quite funny to find river over river. You can quite often get canals going over rivers and occasionally rivers go over railways where the railways cut through. But yeah, look at this. Water and water. I'm going to continue that way and soon we shall go on to the Ness Islands proper. Come upstream again slightly further and here we begin the series of Ness Islands. Seems like the little island there you can't actually get to can get to this one as a suspension bridge in front of us. So the idea to link the Ness Islands was, um, well, they first opened, the bridges first opened in 1828. Previously, to get to the islands, you had to go across by boat, or suppose you could swim or walk across at low, um, when the flow was low. So there's a path there going up to the road. That's that Mystery River, which I'm pretty sure now, I'm convinced now, isn't part of the island. So at the moment I'm on the ground, um, as in the, I'm not in the river. So here is the, the first of the suspension bridges. This isn't the original suspension bridge. Unfortunately, the original suspension bridges were washed away in floods in 1849. It's very pleasant and you can still see, looking back that way, you can just see down towards the cathedral. There's a lot of churches in Inverness. So I, I, I don't know if this is true, but someone said there's more churches than pubs in Inverness, which is, you know, I can believe. There's another Ness Island. I'm not sure how many islands there are on the Ness, but in Inverness, but there seems to be quite a lot, because the River Ness isn't the longest of rivers. For, for such a wide river, it's quite a short river because it comes out Loch Ness and then flows down to the sea. So it's only about 
six miles long or so. And then of course you have got the Caledonian Canal, which I also do endeavour to have a look at in this video. So the Caledonian Canal comes in from the sea and it, go, it takes it all through the three other locks um, in the Great Glen. So this is the end of the Great Glen, which goes all the way through to Fort William. And down at Fort William on the Caledonian Canal, you've got Neptune Staircase. Um, so you can, the idea was to take a ship all the way through Scotland without to go around the top. But the thing is, ships have got a lot bigger now, so not many ships actually, the really big ships wouldn't fit through the Caledonian Canal. This is a very pleasant park here. Something special about being on an island, I think, you're kind of on an island and, yeah, okay, I walked over it, but, over the bridge, but I feel a bit sort of um, disconnected from everyday life. And so I always like being on an island. Um, I'm going to continue walking. I'll show you the bridge to the next island and then the next island, and then eventually one of these islands we should find a miniature railway on. So I'm still on the first of those islands. To answer my question about was that what appears to be quite a small stream an island, well I can just see over there it peels off the nest. So yes, that was also an island. So this is the second island then we've been on, not first. We're about to go over to the third. So as I said, this is like um, one of Inverness's parks. I think it's a very nice park, a bit wooded, open spaces every now and then, but I just really like how it's all on an island or series of islands. I think it's a really nice idea. And um, we're now going to an interesting venture. We're going to cross this rather exciting looking bridge through the trees and over the river. So we can see here we're connecting two islands. Oh, look, there's, um, that looks fun. People are canoeing in the nets. Although I think I prefer railways, but still, it's probably quite fun. Now we come around here. So we're now onto the well, actually, we're on a really small island here, I've just noticed, which you can't really get off this bridge because there's another bridge, so we're sort of fenced in. So we've just come over that bridge, come around this corner, and we go over another bridge. There's the canoeists again, so that's looking downstream. Yeah, so we have just come across this small island. We're now onto this island. I'm actually at the moment following a footpath called the Great Glen Way, so I probably could walk all the way through to Fort William if I wanted to, but that's a, be a rather long walk, a very nice walk. Something for another day though. So I'm going to continue on up here and just through the trees I can see my next bridge which will take me, I think, back onto the mainland, but the railway we go on is on another island, so we'll see that when we get there. Okay, so I'm now about to leave that island across another quite impressive looking suspension bridge. Again, looking downstream, can't really see the city centre anymore. If you walk to the northern tip of, well, it's not northern tip, is it? The um, because that's going sort of southwest. If you walk to the southwestern tip of that island, that's quite a pleasant spot to be. See the water all around you. It's like a leisure park, and it's like a sports ground over there. Um, I can just see another bit of river going off. So that's kind of what takes us to the island where we're going to. So here we are. We're now coming back onto the mainland and um, I'm going to follow along here and I'm not too far now away from the railway. That's the suspension bridge we've just been over. You can just see that tip of the island I was saying about. It's a pleasant place to walk to. I have walked down there before so I'm not worried about doing that today. Um, and then this is just see a bit of water coming off there. There's various other things, um, entertainment, there's crazy golf so if you are coming here, you know, um, as a family, then there's a lot to do to entertain you. Even it's a really nice city to visit. I say city because it's been a city since year 2000. I think um, I remember it being on the news. I remember I was at school and I went to my geography teacher and said, "Have you heard there's three new cities in the UK?" And he said, "Yes. Can you tell me them all?" I said, "Yeah, Inverness, Brighton, and Hove, and Wolverhampton." And uh, both of those other cities do also have miniature railways, so we'll have to go to them in the future at some point. So this is the body of water now which separates us so like I say I'm back on the riverbank the mainland but this bridge just here will take me across and that, I think this is the island where this miniature rail is so let's, um, let's go and see I'm excited about this I just further need more miniature rail though didn't you? so yeah here we go so we're crossing now so this isn't you know a main body of water it's quite a sort of a slow Backwater of water, if there is such a thing. So, this is the island. We might as well walk over here and have a look at the, the main nest again. So, Mitch Railway should be, or is it just, I think I can see some track 
Yeah, I can. We'll have a look at the, the track. Might see a train go past. I know they're having some building work done. They're rebuilding the main railway station. So we might have to do my usual thing and coming back when the building work's finished. But we'll, we'll see. Um, so that's that tip. You can just see a lady standing over there. That's that tip of the island, which is worth a walk to. And here's the main river Ness. And as if on cue, here's a miniature railway. We just need a train now. It's got quite an interesting layout, I believe because it's, it's like a, what they call a dumbbell shape. It's folded in half, and I've seen pictures, it has a very impressive looking suspension bridge. Also has elephants by the track side. And there's, there's more animals up here, interestingly coloured animals. So I think this must be the inner loop here, and this is the outer loop, but somewhere the outer loop goes over a suspension bridge over the inner loop, but we'll, we'll see all of that when we travel on the train. So there's some more animals there amongst the daffodils. It's very nice at this time of year in the spring. I can see a train out, so yeah, my excitement's so, you know, getting, I'm getting more and more excited. There's a train out, so it looks like we're gonna be soon having a ride. I'm probably about one of the first passengers. They said they're gonna start running at 11, and um, it's probably about that now. So, there's your suspension bridge. I think that probably was one of the river suspension bridges, and it's become a railway suspension bridge. This must be their temporary station up here. So we'll go and have a look at that. And then on this side, there's a children's park. Um, so well, they've got a big American diesel out. So I think quite fun, a bit of diesel haulage up here in the Highlands. As soon as there's not that many local haul trains, except the Cardone and Sleeper. Yeah, that suspension that is such an impressive feature for a miniature railway. Then there's a container, it says Ness Island Railway, fare £2.50, here's this big diesel, so it says, yeah, next train's at 11, so that looks like that's what we're going to be travelling behind, it's called Uncle Frank's, this diesel locomotive, number 98, let's have a little look around here, let's see what else we can see, um, I think I can hear some building work up here, this must be the new station under construction, so the thing is they're not quite ready to run yet, let's just go and have a look at that. Very excited, very excited about this. Yeah, you can see the building work just here where they're rebuilding their railway station. So that's sort of the railway, it's been here since 1983 and its owner, when he retired, the railway I think was put for sale and it's now been sold, straight acquired to the Highland Hospice. As I said, it all does go to a very good cause. So if you can see the new station building under construction. So this is where um, you would normally get on the train but they're just completely rebuilding it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go back to that temporary station and um, buy a ticket and board the train for my trip on the Ness Islands Miniature Railway.
Well, I've had a really enjoyable morning here at Ness Island Village Railway. The train takes another load of people off on their ride. I'm going to continue with my walk. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go from the Ness to the Caledonian Canal. So I'll keep the video going just so we've seen the Caledonian Canal because I thought it'd be nice to. My plan is to walk all the way up to the swing bridge at Clacknaharry so we can finish with a standard gauge railway. If you were to come to this railway, it's, it is a fairly flat but longish walk from Inverness Railway Station. It's probably about a mile away, but you know, there's lots of other nice things to see in the area. The park continues on up there, the children's play area. Now I see another lake and everything. So it's a really, really nice park to come to, so do come and visit. And as I said, um, they have their new railway station under construction. So next time we come and visit, perhaps we'll be catching a train from there. So I'm going to now, here's that last bit of river taking us back off the islands. It's been a great morning on the islands. I've enjoyed it and as I said, we're heading over now to the Caledonian Canal. So there's an interesting section of waterfalls here and concrete blocks. And then here, yeah, there's some, some more of the water. So let's go and find the Caledonian Canal. I've gone off on a slight detour of my planned route from the Ness Islands Park to the Caledonian Canal. I've come here, this is the new Inverness bypass. Now, quite clearly the River Ness. And here's another section of river. There's a lot of work going on. There's this rather interesting looking building just here. Now that, I've discovered, is going to be like a hydroelectric power. It's going to be like an Archimedes screw for 
right, to generate some electricity from the waters of the River Ness. Now what I'm going to do is I said I'm going to go to the Caledonian Canal where you can see those gorse bushes right over there. It's, it's just the other side of that so I'm going to go, I could walk a long way between the river and the canal. I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to get to the canal and then head back towards Clacknahari. So there's the Inverness Bypass Bridge in the background, the River Ness, and I believe at the top of these steps we should find the Caledonian Canal, so let's go and see what we can see. Oh uh, yeah, here we go, here's some water. So, that's the way I'm going towards Clacknahari, oh this is a really spectacular view, so that's looking up the Great Glen. Canal and River Ness, so that looks towards Loch Ness. So if the Loch Ness monster exists, even if they, it's never gonna happen, but just say they drain the whole of Loch Ness, which has the largest amount of water in any Scottish loch. Loch Lomond's got the larger surface area, but Loch Ness has the largest volume of water. Just say they decided to drain Loch Ness. The monster's got two routes to escape, at least to this way, not to mention he could also go out to Fort William. So I don't know if they'll ever find that one out, but Loch Ness, is definitely a video for another day. Um, I suppose one day I should do one on the whole Caledonian Canal. I've seen Neptune Staircase from the Jacobite over at Fort William, that's um, really impressive. But right now, we're going that way. We're going to find the swing bridge at Clacknahari. That's where I should end today's video. I've just been walking along the Caledonian Canal now for about a quarter of a mile. And as I mentioned back there, there's this new Inverness bypass. What I didn't know, well, obviously I knew it was going to have to cross the canal, but what I'm quite impressed about is that it's got a swing bridge. This isn't the swing bridge at Clacknahari that I'm, you know, walking towards. So this has to be the newest swing bridge in the UK. It's quite rare now that, you know, a swing bridge would be necessary because normally they would take the road over, you know, the canal or whatever it needs to be, you know, at a greater expense. But here they've actually gone for building a swing bridge. So I think that's quite impressive. I'm going to have to cross the road now and then I'll be able to show you the oldest road swing bridge. So we're going to see sort of old road swing bridge, new road swing bridge. Um, I'm going to get over there, right, let's just get across the road. Yeah, there's a... Oh, I see, yeah, so there's a... Oh, okay, right, I should have gone under the underpass because um, what I'm going to do is go climb the fence because strangely there's no gate here perhaps they don't want to encourage people to cross the road which is sensible but i wanted to see the swing bridge so up the railway level crossing the barriers will go down and the bridge will swing to let the boat through and if we have a look down here we can see the older counterpart just up here and that building there i suppose is a is like a road and canal signal box it's like the control center for the two bridges so yeah if you're going to do this the way it's supposed to come through that modern underpass. And then probably this building in ahead of us, that's probably the canal keeper's cottage. So if you ever get the bus, which I have done a few times, from Fort William over to Inverness, you can come across here and the bus will take you over, over this swing bridge here. But they've now put this road in, so it will obviously relieve some congestion in Inverness, which isn't too bad for congestion, or not that I've seen anyway. So it's, it's a fairly growing city, Inverness. They are building new houses around the edge. It's a very pleasant city to live, though, and to come and visit. I come up here from time to time, and I've, ever since I was a child, I've come up here now and then. I've always really enjoyed visiting Inverness, but I've never got round. I've, I tend to come here and do the railways from Inverness, whether it be the Carl Line or I've done the far north in the past. I've never actually had a chance to walk around this part of Inverness. So we're just coming now up to the older swing bridge. Yeah, that looks to me, like I said, to be probably the original keeper's cottage for the canal and this one also has barriers which yeah no don't want someone driving into the canal if they open it and I've probably now got a mile or so to go from here to Harry. so there's the old um, canal keeper's cottage there now is it going to be a yeah, straight across this time no tunnels to look for so that is the road the older road swing bridge. I can actually do a bit opening now just so I can get across the road. Right, let's go. I, I probably have got a choice now. I can walk up either side of the canal. I think I'll stay on this side. Um, and we're going to continue now 
until I get all the way, about a mile away, so to collect my Harry. So I've been walking now for about a mile. I've come to this staircase of locks. It's um, a staircase in because you've got, you go from one down to another, down to another, as opposed to having a section of, even if it's a short section of normal canal in between. So um, it's not it's not quite as big as the Neptune staircase at the other end of the canal at Banavi near Fort William, but it's quite an interesting thing to see. I'm kind of in line now with the city centre. I don't think I'm going to pick it out to see the castle through there. So to that will give you an idea of where I am. I'm going to continue down the staircase towards Clackamas Harry. I can just see. Let's go over this side. We'll go over this side. I can see the Keswick Bridge in the background, which goes over to the Black Isle. I might just finish the walk on this side, so it'll be on that side of the way. So you can see down the staircase, see up the staircase. Doesn't appear to be any boats at the moment. And in the background over there is Keswick Bridge. So I'm going to continue now through what's now become a more urban part of the Caledonian Canal to Clackna Harry. So I'm continuing on down the Caledonian Canal, quite close to the end now. But I've just found something I didn't expect to see. Look at this. It's looking a bit worse where now, but it appears someone has made a rather large model of the Titanic. So that's a really unexpected surprise, that was. Anyway, I'm going to continue on. It's not far now. Clackton Harry is just around the corner. So I'm almost at the end of the Caledonian Canal. I was on the other side because they're rebuilding the towpath on this side. I've just come across this lock, but it's open. It's the Ben Ultimate Lock. So let the fine Dutchman go through this rather impressive sailing ship. I don't know a lot about ships, I must be honest, um, but that's quite a nice thing to see. I think I'm hoping they're going to go because it'd be a nice way to, nice addition to the video. So we've had trains obviously in the video, railways, because that was the main purpose of the video. Now we've got some ships. I'm always tempted to get a bus back into the nest, whether I will or not, I don't know. So as the Flying Dutchman goes on her way up the Caledonian Canal, I continue in the opposite direction. As I said, this is the penultimate lock, so we don't have far to go now. It's called Works Lock. I admit I only know that because I just read that by the control room. But the thing I've been talking about ever since we got on the Caledonian Canal was the swing bridge at Clackna Harry, so, and that is just here. So this is the line that goes up to the far north, and that Dingwall, the Carl of Lockhouse line, branches off. So here we are, Clackna Harry Swing Bridge. I'm going to wait and see a train here. Very nice place. I've been over it a few times, never actually stood here to see a train pass. Over there is North Keswick on the Black Isle. There's the Keswick Bridge. So let's just hang around, we'll see a train, and then that'll be time to, for me to head back to Inverness.
Well, that was really good, seeing the Royal Scotsman crossing the Caledonian Canal. As soon as we're here, it seems we might as well walk to the end. So I'm going to go across the railway line now. I saw the Royal Scotsman yesterday when I went to Carl of Lockhouse so at Strathcarran on the way back. We passed it and we had a very nice guard and he said, if you want to get out and film it, you know, um, we're not going for another seven minutes. So have a look at that link on screen now. You can see that video. Now we can have a look at the swing bridge here. Um, don't normally like to hang about on rails, so just shows the walk over. There you go, swing bridge. There's also, um, interestingly, there's a lattice footbridge. I wonder get up here, so I might go and have a look at that afterwards. And here we are, very nearly at the end, as I said it before, looking across to the Black Isle. You can now, from this side, see the signal box at Black Mahari, which obviously controls the swing bridge. So I've really enjoyed today. It's been a bit of an unusual miniature railway Britain video. First miniature railway Britain video outside of England. There are various other miniature railways in Scotland, so at some point, probably not on this trip, but at some point in the future we will we'll go and visit those miniature railways because, as I said, I just enjoy any miniature railway. Um, this one was very interesting and we've been able to make quite a nice walk out of it along the Caledonian Canal and the River Ness. And as I said, all the money does go to the Highland Hospice. So, you, you know, if you do go on that miniature railway, your money's going to a very good course. So even if you're not really that, in, if you don't like as miniature railway as much as I do, just go for a ride anyway. Cause, you know, you're doing, your, your, your money goes to a good course. Also, I might as well say, um, when I started the video, where I pointed out the Highland Hospice, which money goes to, they've got a nice cafe, and I have been in there for lunch in the past, so if you're in Inverness, if the railway's not running, then you might as well go and have lunch in their cafe. Um, so, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and like I said, if you're in Inverness, do come and visit the railway, and it is also a really nice city. This is a really nice walk. It's also worth getting the train up to Carl of Lacouche and up to Dingwall and beyond up the far north line. So from almost at the end of the Caledonian Canal, thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.